you might find it interesting that there's almost no safety from dangerous infection and diseases in the world. Did you know that 12,000 individuals die every year from a parasitic infection known as the kissing bug? Will there ever be an end to all of these deadly infections and diseases? Although it's existed in Latin America since 1909, the majority of people are unaware of the endemic infectious disease known as the kissing bug or chaga that has been ravaging the region. The Trypanosoma cruzi parasite is the source of the contagious parasitic ailment known as Chagas disease. It also goes by the name American Kissing Bug Sickness, or known as Trypanosomiasis. The parasite is spread by the kissing bug, a blood-sucking insect, through its bite. It's endemic to 21 Latin American countries and is also widespread elsewhere in the world, including Mexico, Central and South America, and the Southern United States. The disease was first described by Brazilian physician Carlos Chagas, after whom it was named. According to the World Health Organization, 6 to 7 million individuals globally are thought to have Chagas disease, and 12,000 people die from it each year. With an estimated 8 million infected, rural areas of Latin America have the highest prevalence of Chagas disease. The World Health Organization refers to this illness as silent and silence disease, since the majority of patients, 70 to 80 percent, exhibit an asymptomatic clinical history, and the initial signs of Chagas disease are typically minor and may go unrecognized or undiscovered. But, if the infection is left untreated, it may develop into a chronic condition that harms their neurological system, heart, and digestive system. The primary Chagas disease vector is the triatomine bugs, commonly known as kissing bugs. During the day, the bugs hide in crevices in the wall or roof. The bugs come out at night when the inhabitants are asleep. Because they tend to feed on the face of humans, they're also called kissing bugs. Parasite, Trypanosoma cruzi, is acquired by the insect via infected rodents and other animals, such as wild animals. After biting and sucking the blood, they transfer their feces to the person. The predatory bugs leave the Trypanosoma cruzi parasites in very small droppings close to the locations of the bites. Scratching the side of the bite allows some tripomastigotes to enter the host through the wound in their eyes, nose, or mouth. Once inside the host, the tripomastigotes enters the cells. Chagas disease can also be spread by the kissing bug through mother-to-child transmission during pregnancy or childbirth and causes about 13% of stillbirths in parts of Brazil. It can also be spread through blood transfusion or organ transplant. This type of transmission has decreased in the last decade because of improved control in blood banks and hospitals. The disease, however, cannot be spread by casual contact with infected people or animals. Depending on the stage of the infection, the symptoms of Chagas disease can change. This illness progresses through two stages. The initial phase. After being bitten by the kissing bug, the acute phase of Chagas disease typically starts to manifest within four to eight weeks. This is typically characterized by possible fever, exhaustion, headache, muscle discomfort, rash, appetite loss, abdominal or chest pain, difficulty in breathing, vomiting and diarrhea are also possible symptoms, as well as skin lesions or a purplish swelling of the lens of one eye. Additionally, this phase can occasionally lead to death, especially in infants. The Chronic Phase this is divided into two stages. The chronic indeterminate stage is when people have no symptoms. This stage lasts for the rest of the infected person's life, unless they are treated. During this stage, the parasite is hidden deep in organ tissue, especially in the heart. Advanced chronic stage is when 30 to 40% of people with Chagas experience symptoms. This stage develops years after infection and most often results in damage to the heart, while others may experience abnormal enlargement of the colon or esophagus. 
People in both chronic stages are at risk of severe symptoms if their immune system is suppressed due to medical treatment or immune disorder, such as HIV. During the infection's acute stage, parasites may be seen moving through the blood. By looking at the parasite in a blood smear under a microscope, the Chagas illness can be diagnosed. To see parasites, a thick and thin blood smear is prepared and dyed. The parasite or antibodies to the parasite can be found using a blood test. After taking into account a patient's clinical findings and probability of contracting the condition, such as living in a country where Chagas disease is widespread, a diagnosis of chronic Chaga disease is made. In the chronic phase, when the majority of people are tested, the parasite is difficult to detect. Healthcare providers instead test blood for antibodies which are produced by the body to fight against the disease. Because no test is sufficiently accurate to work as a standalone, two or three different tests must be used. If you stayed with us to this point, then it means you like the content for our channel. To see more educational content like this, go ahead and subscribe to our channel and make sure you give us a thumbs up. Thank you. Since there's no vaccination to prevent Chagas illness, precautions have been taken to get rid of the bugs or lessen infestations. Here are a few strategies to stop the sickness from spreading. Avoid sleeping outside or in shoddy buildings constructed of mud or thatch to avoid coming into contact with kissing bugs. Examine donated blood for the Chagas disease. Those who are susceptible to Chagas disease should take precautions when pregnant. Take precautions to avoid insect bites if you're going somewhere where Chagas disease is prevalent. Utilize safeguards for safe food and water. Diagnosing and treating the condition in children whose mothers had Chagas disease and did not receive treatment before pregnancy. For treatment, there are only two antiparasitic medications available, benzinidazole and nefertamox, which has a high success rate and is most effective when started early in the course of the infection. This is most successful if used during the acute phase. For the chronic phase of this disease, medications will no longer work. Instead, these antibiotics are administered to help reduce complications. Other options do exist, but are more complicated and depend on the signs and symptoms. For heart-related symptoms, additional medications may be used, with an alternative being a pacemaker or potential heart transplant. For issues affecting the digestive tract, a shift in diet, medicines, or even surgery can help alleviate complications caused by this disease. Chagas disease is a dangerous condition that can have a serious impact on one's health. It is, however, both treatable and preventable. If the information in this video was helpful and educational, it means that I've done my job, which is to bring you some really helpful health information. If you like this video, then you'll like the other videos just like this one on our channel. Go ahead and follow that prompt on your screen right now to watch the next educational and entertaining health video. And while you're doing that, remember to subscribe if you're new to the channel. And please, give us all a big thumbs up to encourage us to keep on making content like this. As always, thank you for choosing to spend your time with us today. We'll catch you in our next video.